a CF Express B for under $200? Let's check it out. So after recently getting my hands on my Nikon Z8, which I was super excited about, I'd been using a Nikon D600 for the last 11, 12 years, something crazy like that. I didn't quite think that there was gonna be a new discipline of memory cards out. And with these higher end cameras, they, they've got a lot of data that's being recorded, especially if you're shooting 4K, 8K video, you can shoot up to 20 frames per second raw with the camera. They feel up pretty quick and you need something that can read and write super, super fast to cope with that. So apparently you can run a NVMe M2 2230 SSD. So 2230 refers to the form factor, which means it's this tiny little guy. Um, coupled with this CF Converter Express SSD. Now this I paid, I think I paid about $60 Australian. For this uh, SSD, I think it was about $130 or something like that. And then I ended up also getting myself some thermal compounds, uh, which is the MX4. What we're gonna do today is put it all together, give it a well, and then what I wanna do towards the end of the video is do a bit of a test between the ProGrade card and this Corsair card in this converter, just to see how it stacks up. Just to make sure that it can do the 8K video, that it can shoot 20 frames per second, and I guess, See if it's a suitable replacement for brands like the Delkin. So what we're going to do is we're gonna open this bad boy up. That is, that is tiny, isn't it? Look at that. And then we've got our converter kits. Nice bling with the gold. Oh, I don't know if I should have swept that away. Maybe that was a screw. Well, we'll find that out in a minute. Uh, we've got a couple of stickers. So this, this kit comes with the card, obviously, and it's got one screw holding it together, which is kind of nice. What I'm gonna do is just unscrew this tiny, oh my God, it's tiny. I think I need glasses. Cool. Well, we're just gonna go ahead and open that up. Pretty simple. It looks like it's purely just a slot that I suppose you slide your card into. Um, there didn't seem to be any instructions that came with this, so I don't know. I guess we just give it a whirl and hope for the best. Open up. Jeez, that's, so this is a one terabyte that I ended up buying. Isn't that crazy how tiny this thing is? Not really sure if I should peel that sticker off, but let's just send it anyway. I'm sure people are probably cringing at the job that I'm doing right now. So apologies if this offends you. That just kind of slips in there. Oh, yep. Literally just slide straight in. It is, it seems like it is a little bit finicky to to get positioned it seems like feels like it just kind of wants to flex flex and move so oh my god how am i gonna do this oh thank god the screwdriver is magnetic these are the tiniest screw these are like watch wristband wrist you know what i mean they're like watch sized screws Oh my God. There you have it. One terabyte. Do I want to put a sticker on it? Bit of wank factor, but yeah, why not? I mean, maybe it, it looks, looks metallic. Maybe there's a reason. You watch me put this on crooked. All right, well, I mean, to be honest, that probably took about eight minutes to put together. Um, what we're gonna do next is a couple of tests in the camera. We're gonna compare these two side by side. Let's do it. 
So the results are in and it seems like it's just as good as the program. What I ended up doing was a crystal disc benchmark uh, with the reading and the writing, a couple of different levels that are involved with that test and it scored, it, in fact, it very slightly edged out on the prograde in all of those tests. Um, in terms of raw recording, so I've set it up in NRAW 8K, 60 frames per second, totally fine. Recorded without any issues whatsoever. An interesting thing that you may wanna make note of, when I plugged it into the camera, it wouldn't format it, the camera wouldn't read the card at all. What I actually ended up having to do was plug it back into Windows, format it using XFAT, and then it worked fine in the camera, and I've formatted it probably six or seven times, testing it out, clearing the footage, and it's performed flawlessly. Um, so, you know, if you're a professional videographer, if you're doing higher end client work, maybe you're shooting commercials, maybe you have a need to shoot 8K footage, would I use it? You're probably safer using a reputable brand like Delkin Black or something like that. For me personally, I couldn't fault it. It's, you know, cost per gigabyte is probably half or even better, maybe even one quarter. Um, I'm going to keep using it. I'm going to see where we land with it. If it fails or come back, I'll update this post. Um, but otherwise, give it a whirl. Let me know how you find it. Be honest, it's only worth the cost.